unsuccessful test translations are often managed by project managers that operate in a black box, right? So they, they, they get their translation, they, they may do the best that they can on their end, they find the best translators, they, they may even, even uh, do some terminology research and extraction, but they never really engage their customer, thinking they've done uh, the best they can and are really proud of their deliverable, and then this happens. That's the response that they're getting from the customer and the project manager on the back, like, what just happened? You know? So you rarely get very, uh, concrete feedback on, um, on what happens uh, if you get feedback at all. A lot of analogies I will be making uh, are around dating because the same psychological uh, concepts apply. Let's go into that. Why is managing test translations like dating? A test translation is there uh, for a customer to make a decision about the next day. Why the test translation uh, process may take a couple of weeks or a couple of days, the interactions with, uh, between the customer and the project manager are typically very short. They're not that long. When you uh, take all these communications and contract them into, into a time capsule, it's, you have a few minutes uh, of, of communication throughout the, uh, throughout the whole process. And you make a decision there, basically, you know, will I go on the next date? So is that person that I'm, that I'm talking to interesting enough to learn more about that person and uh, what that person is all about? Same as with, the, with test translation. And yes, test translations are there to see whether or not a translator or a company can actually translate uh, in terms of grammar and language and style and, and readability and so on. But it's also there to test the level of interaction and whether or not uh, these two organizations are a good match. And for those of you who have ever been at a speed dating event, this is what it looks like. And you have tables and you go around tables and you basically have two or three minutes each to ask questions and introduce yourself. And then after those uh, uh, combined four to six minutes, you make a decision. And the only decision that you need to make is, is that person interesting enough to go on a second date? Same with test translation, right? So you, uh, you, you, you get those, the opportunity to, to interact with your client for a few minutes throughout that process. And uh, in addition to the quality of the, of the uh, test translation, the client also makes a decision. It's like, is this company interesting enough? Are we compatible enough that it's worth our while to, to continue our conversation? And that's the one part that's always, always forgotten. It's all about quality of the, uh, quality of the, of the translation on the, on the content and the deliverable, not so much about the quality of the relationship or the, the level of engagement that we have achieved uh, during, during that time. So the only decision that you need to make here is like, is that person interesting enough uh, to, to meet him or her again? It's not a decision for life, it's just the next step. And that's what test translations are, right? So it's a, it's a next step to go into negotiation and to learn more about the processes. The other thing that you have in common is you all appear to be a lot nicer than you really are, right? So you go on a date, you show yourself as best as you can. Same in our initial interactions with new customers, right? We're not telling them everything that's not working uh, on our end. Um, we, we try to shine in the best light. And that's true for both, right? So the customer also will, will not tell you what's not working on their end. They will uh, present themselves to you as a wonderful company to work with and encourage you to, to, to be a vendor because they look at you also as an extended arm of their translation, documentation, marketing department, whatever department you, you, uh, you interact with. For example, what we say uh, and the image that we give is like, you now here's the, what, what our house looks like, right? It's neat, there's everything in order. We know where everything are, everything's under control, uh, clean, uh, no chaos. Um, but the reality is that our house, and that's definitely true for, for me, um, uh, looks more like that, right? So yes, we, we, we all have uh, uh, projects that are not going well. We, we are not on top of things all, all the time. 
uh, and sometimes we totally drop the ball. Uh, you know, we have our own weaknesses um, that, that we have difficulty to, uh, to, to get over. Uh, but we are not telling that anybody on the first date, and we're not telling that anybody uh, who uh, wants to work with us. The trust uh, is, is not there yet. And it's also true on the client side. Um, your, your, your customer or client, um, they, their house looks like that as in, in some areas as well. Uh, and uh, during your first interactions, um, you do not have that relationship yet and that trust to... Um, to share. 